Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna have a look at these three Lenovo PCs which I'm gonna be using as three little Lenovo servers but um, these are well rather old machines by now so how do you get a little bit more oomph into your tiny little machines so uh, we're gonna go through that because in an earlier video I, um, I took them apart and I checked out what was inside of them and uh, we have like the top one is the oldest one this is an M92 it says it on the back here just here it says think center M92 which means that it's an ever so slightly older model than the two others which are M93s and this one is from 2012 so by now it's about 12 years old so um it has probably already done a really good job but it has an i3 3220t processor in there it has four gigabytes of ram and it has an old spinning hard drive so uh, there is a lot that can be improved on this tiny machine and the same goes with the other machines well this one has 16 gigabytes of RAM, so that is actually at the maximum that this model can do. But this is a M93, and this one is from 2014, so it's a couple of years newer than the other one. That also means that this one has another CPU socket than the one that we just had a look at. So, but both of the machines uh, has a maximum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. They can use good hard drives like SSDs. 128 gigabyte SSD is not a lot, but it's it's okay for the operating system. But it's perfectly fine for the operating system. This bottom one has the same CPU, but only two gigabytes of RAM. So um, compared to this one, which has 16 gig, this one is going to be slow as heck. But if you want to prolong the life of a tiny machine like this, you want to change the CPU and you want maximum RAM and you want an SSD. So um, what kind of a CPU can we get for these machines? I want to show you that. So for that, we move to the computer and we're going to see my screen. We're going to start with an empty Google Chrome and we're gonna Google our way to success. So to start with, let's see the processor. It's cheating here a little bit. It already knows what I'm gonna search for because I've already done it. So uh, the CPUs in here, let's take the slower one first. That was an i3 and it was a 3220T T there. And you can see that I've searched for benchmark we can just do that and uh, we get cpu benchmark and the top result and it scores ridiculously uh 1940 so that cpu is mm, it's slow very slow um it has two cores four threads so it does actually have hyper threading but the most important thing is here that it tells us what socket is in this uh, machine. So um, we have the LGA1155. So we need to go and figure out how much of a CPU can we put into that socket. So we'll copy that socket number. I will open a new tab and we'll put that socket number in and um, we'll search for LGA50 CPU thing. And I found that this CPU world down here it's a very nice resource. They have all the CPUs in existence uh, divided into sockets. So here we uh, we see all the 1155 sockets and they are listed down here. All of the CPUs that will fit into that socket. I don't know if it's all of them, but it's, um, it's a lot of them. A very uh, convenient thing is that it shows the wattage out here. So some of these CPUs use a lot of wattage, uh, like that one. Normally, faster CPUs use more wattage. That's 
pretty normal. So the CPUs that is in the system, we can probably find it up here <laughs> among the slow ones. Let's see, an i3-32... There is that one. Um, it tells us that that CPU is 35 watts TDP. Um, so we want something that's not crazy much more than 35 watts. The maximum I have run in a in a in a tiny M93 is a CPU that used 54 watts. I do know that other people has run something that uses more than that with good results. But yeah, I don't want to go crazy on it. So we need to figure out what CPU can we put in this machine. Um, we want the fastest possible, but also not one that uses 95 watts. So for that, we go back to this CPU benchmark here. And we can actually click on the CPU benchmark, search for your CPU over here, and we get the entire list of CPUs. We are not that really interested in the entire list of CPUs. We are interested in the one with the socket that we need. And they have a search criteria. They have a search criteria, criteria over here where we can search by socket. Very convenient. And the socket is that one. And nothing really happens, but further down, it actually lists us all the CPUs that has that socket. And they are put in order of speed. So the fastest CPU that we can put in here scores 6,627. If we go further, really far down the list to 1,940, we see the one that we have in here. So that's that CPU. So there is room for improvement there. All of these CPUs are faster. Uh, the closer you get to the top, the more expensive they normally get. With this information, we can see that the Intel CN E3 1275 version 2 is the one that scores the best. So we can go back to this list and skip the ad and we can find it over here. But we can also just click on the CPU here and we get some information about this CPU and it uses, uh, unfortunately, quite an amount of power there. To, to be quite honest, over here, we can quite easily see that all the Xeon CPUs, those are the top ones uh, for, for Xeon CPUs are the quickest for this socket. So if we go over here and we select the model, and we scroll down to the Xeons there, we get a list of Xeon CPUs, and then we can also sort them by wattage. So now you'll see all the CPUs are listed. Here is all the 35 watt CPUs. Here's the one that we already have in there. So what do we have that uses 35 watts in Xeon? Uh, we actually have some very low power ones up here. I look this one up, it's extremely slow. And this one, extremely slow too. So uh, we need to go down. Um, it's, also, it's also a 22 micron uh, processor, which is a bit lower than many of them. And the lower this number is, the, the better it is. There is no 14s here. I haven't, yeah. I found that that one isn't a bad choice, 45 watts. So if we go back here, we will unfortunately see that the 65L is all the way down here. So we lose about 1500 points getting that CPU, which is, it's not that great, but all of these uses a lot of power and these uses a lot of power too. And there is no low power CPUs before we really get into to this one. So if I got this one, I would get more than double the performance of what the system already had. Okay, so this one is actually pretty good as well. So this one I haven't noticed, it's actually better. Um, so yeah, there is a bit of investigating work there. So, but 
it's a lot of these uses a lot of power 90 i don't know why it's slower than the other one it has a better clock frequency i think it might not be totally correct so if i was uh, looking for a cpu for a system with where i didn't have this power restriction and uh, a tiny thing i would naturally go for something uh, a bit faster like this one would be perfectly um, good CPU but price is also a factor so I looked up the the Xeon processor here and that one is available for like 297 Danish crowns that's that's close to 40 40 it's probably around 40 dollars and then there is shipping from China to Denmark that's about five dollars ish somewhere around 45 dollars for that one we also have the other one that is a bit more expensive but it does have free shipping so that makes this one 300 that makes this one 340 danish kroners with shipping and it makes this one 360 danish kroners with shipping so it's like 20 danish kroners which is like three bucks um, so yeah, I would have to figure out uh, what I can afford. So yeah, there is that. So um, let's see what the other CPU or the M93, what we could put in there. So the M93 that had an i3 and that was a 4130T. And we can see the pass mark of that one there. And it scores about a thousand points more. So it's a bit faster. It has the same two cores for all threads. So it has two cores and hyper -fretting. It has another socket, as you can see there. So we're gonna we're gonna skip this part. Um, which there is another important part here. Uh, for this to work, the CPUs need to have built-in graphics cards. So let's just find the one that we were just looking at, it's that one. Make sure that it has built-in graphic. It has GPU type HD 4000, so that is perfectly good. So yeah, that would work. So let's go back to this one and we need to find uh, the best CPUs for this socket, which is a little bit newer, so we can go down and we can sort by socket and we can get the you can see the years here the socket that we just looked at was from 2011 and this one is from 2013 two years newer so we'll pick that one and we'll see a lot of other cpus that we didn't see before because all of these cpus are for that socket and if we go far enough down we will find those Oh, 28, that's the CPU we have in here is there. So there is room for improvement. And you can also see that we get CPUs that uh, can run faster in this one. 8,000, where the other one was, what was that? 6,627 was the fastest one in there. So in those two years, um, a bit has been added to the speed of the CPUs. So if we check the fastest one, we see 65 watts, which, yeah, I do believe that I've heard from people that says that that will work. Um, I would like it to be a bit lower than that. So, um, in here we don't really get a good overview of what uh, the the wattage so we need this other side for that so we'll just we'll just borrow that again so i'll just search for the cpu once again that's i think if we are lucky we have it there so we get the other side cpu world it's called well, we get a lot of good information about the CPU. We do also get the, the HD uh, unit down here. So um, this graphics, this graphics processor is actually 
The other one we just saw was Gen 7. This is Gen 7.5, so it's a it's a well it's a newer socket, so it's a newer graphics card, so Haswell CPU architecture. Um but we need to see all the CPUs for this socket and um, not this ad. So here are all the CPUs for that socket, and we can sort them by how much watts they use. So we can find the fastest CPU for for 35 watts. There's quite a lot of CPUs that runs in this socket and uses 45 watts. We do have some. Uh, you can see this technology is 22 micron, but we do have some that is only 14 micron, like this one, and that is usually a good thing for the for the speed of the CPU. But now we can compare. So we have the fastest CPU here. So we can see that this 1285L, which is a low power CPU right here there's actually four of them 1285l 1285l version 4 in so i think this one is really interesting it uses more power than i have ever put in to one of these the maximum i've put in has been 54 watts but it would be interesting to see if this 65 watt would run and if we click the CPU, we will also see that it has Gen 8 GPU, Intel Iris Pro P63 something something. But I did also find that this CPU is quite expensive. Here it is, and well, it's 991 Danish kronas from the UK plus 120. So that's not very uh, very good. It's better here from the States and about the same in shipping. Uh, but if we go down a little bit from China, we get it for less than 700 Danish kronas with free international shipping. So I would have to go through and see what would make best sense for me. Like I think that those 700 Danish kronas or a little bit less is about the best that that, that can be done for now it changes to other CPUs which is really annoying when you scroll down and then you oh this is cheap and then you have to realize oh it's another CPU and it wouldn't even fit in what I'm doing so eh. so that's how I figure out what processor I can put in a specific system price and performance and does it fit and how much watch it and what are the likeliness that this works Another thing would be would be to Google the machine that you're trying to put this in and the CPU that you want to put in there. In that way, like I'm searching up here, um, you can see if anyone else has had luck with that. So we have Lenovo Think Center support form here and it's not the right CPU. Some other people has the 75L V3 and the E3. The one that I'm looking to put in there is not there. Then we have this fool down here who has put in a um, E3 1275L. And I know for a fact that this dude does not know what he's talking about. So uh, let's skip him. <laughs> and um, yeah. It does not seem that anyone has tried this, which makes me even more interested in figuring out if this is possible and if it will work. Uh, oh, I should really get one of those, but yeah, I'll wait a little bit. Let's um, go back to the machines. So these machines are for my data center bunker project, bunker data center. And um, yeah, we had them up. Uh, the bunker was full of humidity and blah 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 and they're going down there again I'm gonna use them as servers they run Proxmox very nicely I might want to upgrade the CPUs but at the moment I want to try them out as is except for virtualization you really need more RAM so I have some more RAM for them and this was fairly cheap now we have just looked at everything in Danish crowners and I purchased 
four blocks of eight gigabyte DDR3L RAM, 1600 megahertz. And these were 89 Danish kronos each, so 12 bucks or something like that. Not a huge investment. Plus we have this one with a spinning disc in it. So we're gonna replace that. I have a, um, I have an Enterprise, a Hewlett Packard Enterprise SSD. It's just a SATA drive. It's just 240 gigabyte uh, SATA drive here. So we're gonna put that in. It came out of a server. The server said it wasn't good anymore. I tested it, it worked as I was expecting. If you were gonna use this for your home PC, you would probably get something bigger, like a, a two terabyte SSD like this one. Um, for for my purpose here, for the operating system Proxmox to boot on, I don't need two terabytes. And it would be quite a waste to put a hard drive like in there. So this one is good to go. We don't need to do anything. It's very handy that I put these stickers on the side of them because there's no chance in, in the heck that I can remember what's inside of these machines. But this one with the same CPU but only two gigabytes of RAM. We need to do some work on that. So we have a uh, have a trusty screwdriver here. I can actually see a bit of corrosion on some of the screws here for it when it was wet in the bunker. So uh, yeah, we'll just tighten that up and get in there. So, but on the inside of the machines, I didn't find anything uh, wrong with them. So in here we have. Um, this one has an SSD, 128 gigabytes sand disk. That's perfectly fine. Underneath it, we have the RAM. So we need to get to that. So there's two screws. So upgrading the, the hard drive is no issue whatsoever. It's very easy. You take out these two screws there. The hard drive slides to the side. Uh, Come on, ah, that way, pops up. You can unscrew it. We're gonna do that with the spinning disc in just a second. Also, we have a slot up here. In other videos, I've used that slot to uh, to take out and, um, oh, I can show you that. Which in this machine is used for the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. You can also put a little adapter in here and you can get a, a connector out and you can have this external PCI Express uh, slot which is only an x1 but in this instance i'm actually using it for a raid card or an hba and actually in this case you can also put a gpu in there so that would be good for that never mind we need to upgrade this ram because that two gigabyte block here is um, tiny so let's get that out of here there might be able to use that in something else so, oh, this plastic thing is the one that, oh, you're never gonna. Scissors, uh, you're not going to be trying to return this as never opened. Uh, you can't get into it without ruining everything. So there's one very nice RAM block right there. So let's hope it fits. Otherwise I've messed up. That would, have, that would be embarrassing. So it needs to go in here, down there, into Click. next. Here's the next one, scissored open. Open sesame, come on. Eh. There we are. And another nice. Let's just have a zoom in on this. If this works, I'll be sure to leave some links in the description so you don't have to uh, it's a DDR3 L RAM, um, non ECC, non buffered, and this is 1600 megahertz RAM, eight gigabyte blocks. So it's um, the maximum amount of RAM that this little system can uh, can handle. There, and we are good to go. Put this back in place. Still no rust. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an issue that you normally have to worry about in your PCs. Yeah, are they rusting? So, there. So, that's that machine. A couple of screws, and then that will be that machine. Okay, so uh, this label is no good anymore. 
uh, it's very helpful to have these labels on there so um, yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna maintain that and put it back on so um, now this is outdated and we can move on to the next one see um, I would already have forgotten which one of these I was actually gonna take next but now I know that it's this one <laughs> so very handy so let's open this up we have two RAM blocks more so this is the machine from 2012 there are a bit differences on the back of these machines they're very similar but there are a little bit of differences um, mostly the power connection is different okay I actually thought that was more than that but there is a USB connection over here which is a 2 on this one and there's a 3 on the newer one so yeah okay maybe the differences aren't that wild so moving on so this one is the one from 2012 as I said so we have we have a spinning disc in here I'll take the the label off. We also have some um, some dust here that I might want to go and get rid of. Mm, a little bit the the fan assembly setup is is quite different. I see. Hmm, interesting. So on the other one, the fan is on top of this, and here it's uh, it has a heat sink, and then the the fan sucks air out through this I'll just go and clean this a little bit it's disgusting okay cleaner uh, so this one we need to do a little bit more with we need uh, we need the hard drive to come out of here I think on this model the loudspeaker the loudspeaker which is a tiny speaker uh, we have to be very careful with that because it's it's in there in a very delicate way so we don't want to ruin that admittedly it's not gonna be needed much in a server but yeah it's nice if it still works can we see all that let's see can see if I lift that up need to unplug that underneath here ah there here is the system it looks very similar to what we just saw in the other one the rest of it there's two RAM slots there's a little slot for the Wi-Fi thinky so this one had four gigabytes of memory so this block I could use for something else putting two blocks in here also means that we get more performance because of the of the better RAM configuration which can actually do quite a bit so uh, let's get this RAM out of here I'm not sure if this CPU can handle uh, 1600 megahertz doesn't matter it will just run a bit slower if the CPU can't handle it so there that's the first one it needs to go down beneath the other one and then slide in to the sl oh <laughs> okay there is a change there they have they are the the other way up that's kind of funny okay didn't see that one coming so that's the RAM upgrade now we need the the hot disk upgrade so I'm gonna get rid of this spinning disk let's unplug that there and then undo the spinning disk here uh, with spinning discs they have like they have a little bit of rubber here for some shock absorbent so here we have a nice western digital 320 gigabyte spinning disc from a 
actually this is 7200 rpms which is better than the normal so this one i didn't really look how which way this goes in but yeah now this is an ssd it doesn't care about the robbery thing but yeah that's it's fine let's just keep those not that i expect that this machine is ever gonna see a spinning disc again but yeah you know we have these screws it would be a hassle to find something else where it that would fit so we need to put the the loud <laughs> we need to put the loud speaker back in <laughs> i can assure you it's not that loud yeah that's I hope that was the right way, otherwise it will be playing backwards. That was a joke. And uh, these cables are very tiny. There is not a lot of oh, not a lot of space to work with here. Uh, back there, it's like big fat fingers can be a problem. I'll close this up. Okay, new label has been produced and put on. Awesome. So we're just gonna make sure that this works. So I have the bottom one, we didn't do anything with that. The top one uh, was the one that we put more RAM in. So I have that running up here. Uh, still need to put some other operating system on it so we can only see it in the BIOS. So let's go system settings. We see 16 gigabytes of RAM in there. And we see the, the 128 gigabytes SAN disk and we see the CPU. Everything is good and jolly. I'll shut this down and we'll see the older version, which is even more exciting to see. So here I have connected the top one. So when I turn that on, uh, it powers the monitor here. It's a very cool setup that I have for that. So this tiny little USB connector is a USB to 12 volt converter and that 12 volt is enough to power that monitor. So when I power this on, let's see, power on and the monitor also powers on. So that's kind of cool. And we need to press F1. Let's see if I managed. Okay, I had a bit of a bad connection in the USB port that powers the, the yeah, the, the monitor converter thing. It converts the VGA connection to an HDMI connection and that is powered from USB as well. So, uh, we also have a license that is running out. You have, uh, this is the old machine. Uh, okay, I put an old hard disk in there and that actually has server 2016 standard evaluation version installed on it. I am surprised that that just booted up and then it uh, stopped doing anything. This is that connection again. Yep, bad USB connection. Okay, we have our slow CPU and we have our 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that part works and it's booting from the hard drive. So that thing works as well. And we have, we have that ever so bad. I need to, I need to clean that connection. I see it's not happy about it. Yeah, we have our SSD there. It works. Okay. We, uh, we got the machines upgraded. I see another difference in the front here. We have a yellow connector. We don't have that up there. We have a blue connector. Never mind. Other than that, they were very similar. And it even runs server 2016, which I wasn't expecting. I have not ordered new CPUs for these yet. I'm gonna run them with the CPUs that they have for a little bit until I know if I'm gonna continue with this project because uh, if, if brand new, still removing plastic from them, um, 700 Danish kroners for the CPUs for those two are close to a uh, hundred dollars so um, yeah that's two hundred dollars for upgrading these machines and to be quite honest I might never need that so um, yeah we're gonna continue the project with the CPUs as is 
only need some more RAM and I got that so um, awesome so it's very nice that the RAM to put in these machines has become affordable because last time I bought RAM for them it was at least 50 euros for just one of the machines now I got like two machines for like less than 50 euros so uh, that was awesome what CPU can you put in this machine? I think we got a good overview and you and you can of course go and check out what you want to put in a machine like this if you have a machine like this. These are very affordable by now. Well, affordable and affordable. Weirdly enough, they have kept their price really good for 12 and 10 year old machines. So uh, yeah, there is that. So thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.